our next topic is, is morality objective? And if you recall, when we did moral skepticism, I said moral skepticism turns out to be about whether morality is objective. So hopefully a lot of what we talk about in this unit ends up being familiar to you. And so when we talk about whether morality is relative or whether morality is objective, uh, you might your initial response might be similar to the initial response I talked about in moral skepticism. So in moral skepticism, I said, here's the question, is, is morality real? And I said, look, there's a very easy answer, which is, look, of course, morality is real. You're taking a course called Introduction to Ethics. There's got to be something that morality is because you're studying it. You've been studying it for weeks now. And then we said, oh, well, maybe there's ways to develop the question where it's not such an obvious answer. And so similarly, when it comes to is morality relative, there's another very easy answer there, which is, yes, of course, morality is relative. Look, people have a bunch of different moral views. You ask one person what's right or wrong, and they say one thing. You ask another person what's right or wrong, they say another thing. So of course, morality is relative. How is that even a question? But no, that's missing the point. When we ask whether morality is relative, or rather whether it's objective, probably what we mean is something like the sort of second bullet point up here, uh, the indented one. So we're asking, look, is there any sort of like principled way to judge between the different moral systems? Is there some of these systems that are better than others, or some that are more correct than others? Maybe some of them are objectively true, others are objectively false. So yes, of course, lots of people have different moral systems, that person has one moral view, that person has another, but maybe one of them is right and the other is wrong or something. Maybe that's what we're trying to figure out. So can we pick between one or the other on the basis of something other than mere preference? Is there some way to settle this debate? Is there some way to choose the right one versus the wrong one? Or is there no such thing as right versus wrong? Uh, so as the outline puts it, are there times when judgment is impossible, when you just can't judge between two or more different moral systems? There's just no way to pick between them, no principled way to make a decision. So that's basically the question. Are there sort of objectively right answers to which moral system to pick? Or is it sometimes the case that no, you just, you just can't pick between the two in any objective sense? So that's kind of what we're interested in here. Some people are moral relativists because, or they think they're moral relativists, because they think uh, if you're not a moral relativist, you would have to be very intolerant of other people's moral systems. So if you think your moral system is correct and other people's moral systems are incorrect, then you'd go around sort of telling people they're wrong or you'd impose your moral system on them. You'd sort of become a colonialist or something like this. We're gonna see one discussion of this in Williams, or when I say we'll see a discussion, we won't. He, he briefly mentions it, uh, and then I explain in the lecture for Williams what uh, sort of he has to say about it. He calls this notion vulgar relativism, and why does he think it's vulgar? Well, you can go watch the lecture for Williams to figure that out, but as I talk about in the lecture, I think vulgar relativism, there's not a lot of hope for it. Uh, the best you can say about it is that if it's true, then it turns out it's not relativism, it's objectivism. And objectivism might be true, that might be fine. So uh, Enoch, the other guy we're going to read, he thinks objectivism is true, so there's nothing wrong with being a moral objectivist. But um, it's, it's different from being a moral relativist. And so if the idea is we need to tolerate different moralities or different cultures, that's probably an objective view. Maybe uh, one other reason to be a moral relativist is that uh, the thought is, well, I don't see how I could be a moral objectivist. I don't, I just don't see how morality could be objectively true or false. It doesn't seem like the sort of thing that could be objectively true or false or right or wrong. So one way to think about it is, look, I, I don't know, we've looked at three theories of morality already in this course, which sort of suggests that it can be objectively right or wrong. Uh, we looked at Aristotle, we looked at Kant, we looked at Mill. We've actually seen a bit more. So Brink very briefly gave us his 
moral theory. Have we seen anything else? Um, no, I mean, the existentialists are kind of in the middle. Um, and I can't remember what else we've read so far. Um, so one possibility there is, look, uh, if you don't see how this works, here are some examples. And so there you go. And of course, there are many modern philosophers who are building projects similar to Kant and Aristotle and Mill. So if the thought is, how could morality be objective? The answer is, well, here's, here's some examples. Another worry with saying, look, uh, well, be, before we go on, so if you think a little harder, you might think, well, hold on, morality is objective according to Aristotle. I thought morality depends on eudaimonia and eudaimonia depends on sort of uh, the characteristic function of human beings. And so isn't that sort of like subjective to human beings or uh, morality is objective for Kant. Uh, I thought morality is about what you can consistently will uh, given categorical imperative. And that seems like it's a subjective thing, like reason is a subjective process. Um, and for Mill, morality is all about what causes pleasure and what minimizes pain. Well, pleasure and pain are subjective feelings. And so isn't morality built upon subjectivity? So isn't it all relative for all these three authors? Um, I don't know, in one sense, yes. I mean, this is asking the question in the sort of third indented bullet point, like what is objectivity? If you start really thinking like, I don't know, I've just been throwing around the words objectivity, relativity, subjectivity all this time as if we know what they mean. And I gave one sort of understanding or one gloss of objectivity, which is, is there a principled way to judge between the different systems? But ultimately, these are very, very fuzzy words. And I, a lot of people don't really think we have much of a handle on what they mean. So like, I don't know, you walk up to somebody and say, is morality objective? What are you actually asking? Or is morality relative? What are you actually asking? <laughs> maybe nothing, maybe, I don't know. Like what in the world are we talking about? It's not super clear. So if you start to think about this really hard and you think, look, I don't know what objectivity or subjectivity or relativity mean in this context, I don't think you'd be going crazy or missing the point. I mean, that is one direction people go, which is this question just doesn't, like, what, what do you care if morality is objective or subjective? Like that just, that doesn't mean anything. Um, so that's not a terrible place to end up if you just re reject the framing of the question. But that's not to say that's the only place to end up. So you could just say, no, I think I have a pretty good handle on what objectivity and subjectivity or relativity mean in this context. You know, I'm talking about, is there a principled way to judge between moral systems or are some of them true and some of them false? Like, you know, that makes perfect, great. So if it makes perfect sense, then, and you're also worried that you can't see how sort of morality could be objective, uh, going to the last bullet point now, is morality special? So I would make sure, try to make sure you're not sort of holding morality to a higher standard than you're holding other things. Um, so some people think morality must be relative because they can't understand how it could be objective because they just don't know what it would look like for morality to be objective. But then they haven't really thought what it would look like for anything to be objective. So what would it mean for mathematics to be objective? What would it mean for science to be objective? What would it mean for well, I, I don't know, anything to be objective. And so you want to make sure if you're worried about morality's objectivity specifically, that you don't, that you're not holding it to sort of very high standards or holding it to special standards that you're not holding other things to. Now you could think everything is subjective or everything is relative, not just for morality, but science is all relative, math is all relative, everything is relative. That's fine, that's a coherent position. But notice then, uh, like we talked about with global skepticism back in moral skepticism, that has nothing much to do with morality. It's an interesting philosophical position, but in an ethics class, there's just not a lot to say about it because like, again, it just, it has nothing to do with morality specifically. So there's nothing wrong with rejecting moral objectivism because you reject objectivism, period. Uh, but we can sort of put that to the side. What we do want to be careful about is not uh, rejecting moral objectivism, but then accepting objectivism about like science or about math or something without having some reason to do that. And is there some reason to do that? Um, 
I don't know, like, <laughs> we, we can talk about it. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see uh, Williams defend relativism, we'll see Enoch kind of attack relativism, and uh, by the end you can either make up your mind or not.